Firebird is definitely one of those one-shot movies that deserve to be a series. It was so good, so fantastic. And we definitely had some questions about how Bullock was able to get inside of Duncan's mom. Like, how was he able to clap the cheeks? Like, it, it, was she just that freaky? Like, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It, it is what it is here. But we're not here to talk about how Duncan came into this world, half dragon and half, or half kaiju, excuse me, and half human. We're here to make his life more difficult and throw him against the Pacific Rimverse. We're going to put these kaiju in their respective categories, three, four, five, and apparently six. Yeah, apparently there's a category six named Breacher, so... Yeah, I guess we'll talk about him as well here. So we're going to have all these fights on land. They're all going to take place in the desert, considering the kaiju can function in the desert, which is actually pretty interesting because of, you know, the whole Pacific Rim and black stuff here. And Duncan's going to be running through him. He'll have a day's rest and days to heal. You know, he'll basically run through it category by category. So without further ado, let's talk about the important part, Duncan scaling. Now, Duncan has two ways of scaling, his own verse individually and the crossovers. And considering Image Comics is really loose with their canosity with even things like Invincible War being canon, I guess you could say this would also count as well. Now, Duncan in his own verse is able to throw around and thrash around kaiju that are somewhere close to the levels of his father, like Rastinoff and... I believe it was Ragnarok, I believe. These two kaiju, they were traitors, but they were capable of harming Balak, but they couldn't take him on individually, so they had to jump him, right? Balak is someone who can easily destroy entire cities by himself here, even reducing them to ash, which again would put Balak around the city level. However, in the comics, Duncan actually has shown comparable or sorry, compatibility or comparability, I'm trying to say here, to a much younger Invincible. And Balak was able to smack him around as if he were a fly. This is important because young Invincible was doing around some at least large town level to multi-continental stuff, depending on how you get the calc here. He definitely scales above Tech Jacket, or is at least relative to him, and Tech Jacket was fighting beings who could basically um, lift entire towns up and throw them at him like freaking footballs and stuff there. So again, you would have that town level, if not large town level scaling. Then you have the sheer fact that Invincible was able to smash through a planetoid that was already going to explode anyway, but he did this along with his father and another rogue Viltramite doing this at at least a relativistic if not faster than light speed here and being able to destroy this planet nevertheless he would actually have around continental to possibly even multi-continental attack potency depending on how much you think mark contributed all right so with that being said here duncan does have some relativity to invincible due to his showings against his father if not flat out superiority to at least a young invincible as for other ways to scale him in his own verse here it's actually confirmed he's durable and impervious to most earthly weaponry this means that it's very possible he could take nukes or he can at least endure a nuke without getting knocked out meaning that it could damage him but he's still able to tank it which again would Put him around the city levels as well depending on the size of the nuke if you actually want to get him to a hydrogen bomb then those are absolutely ridiculous <laughs> now as for his attack potency with his other attacks here duncan is able to manipulate fire he can use this in like his hands he actually was able to burn his father's corpse when he died of some kind of means i definitely have to re I definitely have to look that up because his father did die. He was able to burn his father and actually was able to harm his father on multiple occasions. And there's even like an evil alternate version of himself that's able to cut like Nighthawk in half, which Nighthawk is able to take is capable of taking attacks from beings like Savage Dragon, who's able to like harm spawn. So <laughs> Yeah, um these image comics characters get crazy they're definitely going to be in the versus section of wave eight and please remember we are on wave six still with wave seven being the remake phase okay so with that being said here with duncan also having oh almost forgot his speed here duncan scaling to well 
possibly his father as well, who's able to react to fighter jets, would actually be around the Mach 5 speed, if not slightly faster, which would put him at Mach 6. So in conclusion, Duncan could easily be around the city to at max multi-continental with hypersonic speeds, fire breath, low level regeneration, and pyrokinesis, obviously. So with that being said here, let's begin. Starting off with category threes. Now, each kaiju pretty much scales to each other in their respective categories. Now, this is pretty important because category threes are around the city level. I would probably say large city level as well, considering the sheer fact that the original category three, the first category three, excuse me, known as Trespasser, not only was only the epicenter of an 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake, I hope I got that right, it was a very high level earthquake anyway, but he was also able to tank three nukes, three nukes before dying. I think it was the third one that killed him, but again, the sheer fact that he had to endure two nukes, and then the sheer fact that they were repeating this over and over again, shows that these kaiju were easily city level at base. Now, could Duncan actually be able to take out a category three, and we will be going back and forth with both cross for scaling and regular scaling so can duncan actually handle categories threes now at his base level scaling or his own verse level scaling um yeah he can this dude can send kaiju flying with ease and should be around the same level as a nuke all right if not should be slightly greater than it because again impervious to most weaponry the kaiju like his father and etc can withstand nukes and two to a degree here excuse me so with that being said here it's very possible that he would probably just burn category threes over and over again and probably just probably just well on them continuously probably ripping out like vital areas like their eyes maybe even digging in a bit deeper into their body into their more wounded areas possibly finding any openings he can yet yeah, he'll be able to beat a category three with his base level scaling However, with his crosshair scaling, yeah, he just rips them apart with ease here. There would actually be nothing to stop him. So he clears the first round pretty easily. Now, let's go to Category 4s. Now, these guys are significantly stronger than Category 3s. Even being able to manhandle Jaegers with at, well, pretty much no difficulty, but... Eh, uh, okay, with some moderate difficulty depending on the model. They were able to beat Channel Alpha and Crimson Typhoon like they were absolute nothing. Things that, uh, or oh, sorry, Jaegers that have been able to casually beat Category 3s with ease. So Hakuja, Shrike Thorn, Scunner, Raiju, Otachi, and Leatherback. All of these characters, or all of these Kaiju, excuse me, all are Category 4s. This will put them around the mountain to possibly island level ranges, which is something that Duncan really doesn't deal with on a regular basis here, or at all, in all honesty. So with that being said here, what is Duncan's best way to really go about it? Now again, I know the scaling for Pacific Rim is very contentious, considering the sheer fact that the Jaegers are meant to hit harder than nukes, which would put them again at large city level, if not possibly mountain. And Duncan is still fighting against his father, who is stronger than every other kaiju, unless they try to, like, all jump him, which is pretty important here, considering the average kaiju would be around city level, scaling off of him. And if, again, he is stronger, this could easily put him at mountain level ranges, like, pretty easily. And again, the whole impervious to every weapon nuke, yeah, this would, again, put him around you know the same level as nukes and stuff here so again he's still able to harm kaiju but it's just like now it's going to be more difficult with his baseline scaling here it's very possible that if he and otachi start flying with otachi maybe being faster i'm not really too sure about that here um she was able to reach you know ground level to atmospheric speeds here in little less than five minutes which is impressive However, I do see Duncan kind of like burning her wings and then Leatherback, he would just probably expose his EMP and just start ripping them apart with Hakuden Strikethorn likely just not really doing much. And then we don't really see too many good showings for Scunner and Raiju who were harmed by Gypsy Danger. So it doesn't look too good for them. And it doesn't look too good for Duncan, especially if we use the lower end scaling, but his higher end scaling definitely makes this pretty easy. 
Now let's move on to category fives, which would actually include Raiju um, and Slattern as for right now. So with that being said here, in all honesty, it's very interesting to know how Slattern would move on land if the fight, since the fight is going to have to take place here because Duncan can't swim. We, we don't know if he can swim. This is why the series should have continued, by the way. Or at least the series should have happened, I should say. However, Raiju is also probably a bit stronger than Slattern, considering he can take kinetic energy and redirect it back at his opponent. Meaning that Duncan's going to be hard-pressed to beat these kaiju here. However, the thing is, Slattern is a bit easier for Duncan to beat than raging i would say i know i said ride you but excuse me see the thing about it is here i know a lot of people scale um slattern to country level because of the whole thermonuclear bomb that went off and how you know he was able to survive it again survive not really tank because that left that boy seriously injured but here's the thing um water reduces 90 percent of the explosion so it's very possible that Slattern didn't tank a lot of the blast force or the force of the explosion in general. So that being said here, that means Slattern may not even be country level in all honesty, possibly island level at best. And again, with Invincible's higher end scaling, with him scaling to his father and stuff here, it wouldn't take too long for him to just dispatch Slattern and get it over with. Same thing with Raging, except the same with Raging. All Duncan really has to do is slam buildings on him just to overwhelm him and then just kind of go for the opening when his face is open. And it's very possible that Raging can't absorb like blast energy because he couldn't absorb the kinetic energy from the buildings, which I found was weird. So, with that being said, here Duncan does clear it high to extreme difficulty with his higher ends here. But then again, his lower ends means he that he just doesn't clear. He would stop around category fives here. Now, let's go over the Mega Kaiju, the big boss of the verse, right? Now, Mega Kaiju is actually pretty interesting here. Because all Duncan really has to do is start targeting weak points. He can outmaneuver the Mega Kaiju, even though the Mega Kaiju would be stronger than him because of his lower ends. However, due to Duncan's intelligence and him using his fire breath and the sheer fact that he can absorb things like sunlight to replenish his energy as well, possibly also amplify it, he would probably be able to burn a lot of Mega Kaiju's um, armor away to order, in order excuse me, to target some of his weak spots. If not, and Duncan really doesn't know about these weak spots at all, so I guess that was really just out of the ballpark, right? Then this means he's actually going to be struggle and hard-pressed to actually take down Mega Kaiju here. He can definitely send him flying, definitely send him around here, possibly use his own weight against him, and actually have him, like, you know, collapse on himself maybe a little bit here. But again, he also possesses the ability of Raging, which allows him to take the kinetic energy and just redirect it back as opponent. He has a Kuja's um, armor and then Strike Thorn spike and capabilities. So, eh, Duncan's going to be hard pressed to take this big guy down. However, with his higher ends, I guess you could say he really does is all he really needs to do is just like fly through him like Gypsy Danger did and it'd be over. So, huh. Yeah, uh, um, Duncan's doing pretty well here. I mean, scaling to his dad, scaling to Invincible, I mean, he's doing pretty well for this gauntlet here. Even though, again, keeping it pretty simple and keeping it at both ends, remember, there are ways he can just simply stop. As I do think the Category 5s would be a bit too much as they're around possibly country to island level or island level with country being a possibility. However, with the Invincible scaling, he just dog walks like pretty easily. Now on to the only confirmed Category 6, which is Breacher. Um, I think Duncan would actually beat Breacher a lot easier than he would with raging and mega kaiju breacher is stronger yeah but that's all he really has just that brute strength in that armor it's not anything duncan's not going to be able to deal with 
probably just beat him around, probably target his eyes and stuff like that with his fire breath. In all honesty, he just deals with Breacher pretty easily. So that's what we have here today. So on his more normal ends, no crossover whatsoever, um, Duncan actually stops around the Category 5s. I would definitely say that. He definitely stops around the Category 5 margin. And with his crossover scaling to Invincible and obviously scaling off his father who was thrashing around young Invincible, yeah, he would actually be able to clear the verse pretty easily. But that's going to be all today, you guys. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe, and share it with your friends. This is Legendary Grimlock, and I hope you guys have a blessed day. Peace.